everybody. So my name is uh, Patrice Bachin. I am from the Laboratoire de Génie Chimique, Université Paul Sabatier, in uh, Toulouse, in France. And so Toulouse is a city in the southwest of France here. And so today I will present you um, an energy map model that uh, will be used to describe the transfer uh, through a membrane. First, I will start with the physics uh, of the membrane transport. So, uh, in fact, it's relatively complex because uh, when particles are transferred through membrane, uh, there is different kind of transport phenomena that can occur. First, hydrodynamic because of the flow through the membrane uh, that can act on particles, and also because of a colloid colloid interaction. So particle can uh, interact with repulsive or attractive forces and you can also have some colloidal uh, colloids wall interaction and then um, we have to know that um, uh, when dealing with a concentrated and shear interacting object there is some interesting uh, model to describe the, the transport that are suspension balance model uh, but it's more complex when we are considering the fact that um, this object, this concentrating object particle, are approaching an interface and then can flow, for example, here in a confined space. So here we need to 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 change uh, the suspension balance model and to implement some new things. And I will show you that the way to do that is uh, to account for that. It's to to add another energy map model. So first, I have to introduce a uh, slide where there is a lot of equation, but this is the equation need for two field model or suspension balance model. Uh, but I will go rapidly through this. Uh, so first, we have to consider the momentum uh, balance on uh, the fluid phase because there is some liquid here. The dispersed phase, the particles, and this is constituting uh, the wall dispersion. So we have to apply a momentum balance on the dispersed phase on the fluid, and the sum of this uh, momentum balance will give the momentum balance of the wall suspension. And we can do the, exactly the same with the mass balance on the dispersed phase, on the fluid phase, and on the wall suspension. And yeah, here just to go rapidly in this uh, momentum balance, we will find the effect of gravity, the effect of drag force, the effect of pressure, the effect of viscosity and, and this is very important, some momentum exchanges between phases. And if we want to uh, find this, uh, this uh, equation, uh, we have to use some uh, closer relationship. And so this is also called a rheological model for colloids. And so it's possible to, to, to define the momentum exchange for particle um, by considering that it's isot isotropic. Uh, so by considering only normal stresses, it's possible to define it as the osmotic pressure. That can also be generalized to a particle pressure by adding the effect of uh, the shear here. So this can be seen as the kind of storage of the energy, the momentum, um, uh, in the concentrated uh, dispersion or in high shear zone. Uh, for the second one, so for the momentum action for the fluid, in fact it's linked to the viscosity. And uh, so here it's this, this viscosity can also be combined to the viscosity of the water to represent the shear viscosity of the bulk. So here we have a dissip dissipative contribution in the fluid phase. So now, uh, then from that, it's possible to, to have a closed form for shear interactive colloids with the osmotic pressure and the effect of shear here. And then we can select uh, some of this equation because we don't need all these equations, we need only two for each set here. And to complete determination of this equation, we need a second closure, which is, uh, which is the expression of a drag force as a function of the velocity, and so the velocity of particles, and the velocity of uh, the mixture here. 
So at the end, the, this uh, suspension balance model is, uh, is shown, has been shown as a powerful model for dispersion flow uh, because it's accounting multi-body interaction through osmotic pressure, and so you are able to def to, uh, to describe diffusion, interaction induced, induced diffusion, and you are also accounting for shear uh, dispersion and then through the, through the solid pressure extension uh, that and then you are able to uh, also describe shear induced diffusion and lateral migration but there is still this problem about the, sh the flow of dispersion in confined pore and then this colloidal wall interaction can be um, integrated implemented in this in this model through the end so yeah, the energy map is something that can that be used in different kind of uh, in different contexts. For example, to to have the energy landscape of uh, lighting cells, uh, cell walls, for example, or for colloid in membrane uh, surface ruthless by different team in recent paper. And so, if we have this kind of energy map, we with a gradient of the energy map. We will be able to have an additional transport phenomena in uh, the suspension balance model. And so it's like this that we will proceed. So we will uh, implement in the momentum balance this uh, additional uh, transport phenomena linked to the gradient of the free energy due to the interaction with walls. So we will add this in this in the dispersed phase and then also on the wall dispersion here. Uh, at the end, uh, we will have a two thread plus one solid model. We will have a shear thread, so the liquid, the mobile phase with a dispersed phase, and the stationary phase, uh, which is here the interface. And um, here, uh, the effect of hydrodynamic traction will play on the liquid for the viscosity on the dispersed phase for the colloid mobility and in the stationary phase we will have some pressure drop because of this interface and so this hydrodynamic interaction will be will lead to this will lead to a viscous dissipation of the momentum um, and concerning the uh, physical chemical interaction so this physical chemical interaction will be uh, account in the shear free phase through the shear induced interaction, in the dispersed phase through the colloid colloid interaction, that is accounted through the osmotic pressure, thermodynamic osmotic pressure, yeah. and in the stationary phase with this uh, energy map and then with the colloid interface interaction. All this will give the colloid pressure, that is also a kind of storage of the energy. Uh, in shear zone and in concentrated zone. So now I will go to Kai Studio. I will apply this uh, kind of uh, modeling to a particular case of reverse osmosis flow in a pore. And so to do that, if we are considering the transfer through a pore, we can consider that you can have, for example, some electrostatic interaction with the wall, like it's uh, calculated here through uh, a uh, code done to calculate the, uh, done by Yannick Alley in Toulouse to do the calculation of the electrostatic potential. And, uh, but here it's relatively complex because it's uh, two dimension. And so in order to have a simpler uh, system to start, I will consider this in one dimension. So along this poor uh, axis here. And so the consequence along the power axis is that you have no interfacial uh, pressure if you are far from the channels and when you are approaching the channels the, this energy is increasing and then you have an energy that can be constant inside the pore and a new decrease uh, when you will go out here. And so here I define here the interfacial pressure that I will be uh, uh, that I will use, and for this interfacial pressure, for interfacial pressure, I can define a partition coefficient. I will show you that later, which is here ten percent. So at the end, the final set of equation with the energy map 
It's conservation of mixture velocity, the momentum balance, and the mass balance. And here it's interesting to see the effect of the important term here. So we have here a convective term for mass transport, a diffusive term, which is linked with a stock generalized law to a gradient in uh, osmotic pressure here, term 2. And then you have this new term uh, for pore wall exclusion from the energy map, 3. And uh, you can also add the effect of the pressure for. And by considering the coupling of this uh, phenomena, we can describe the very important uh, mechanism that we can find in uh, uh, membrane transfer. So if we are considering the coupling between 1 and 2, as uh, so convection and diffusion, you can describe the film and the gel model if you are considering collective diffusion effect and with this uh, osmotic pressure. 2 and 3 uh, to diffusion and the energy map can help to describe the Boltzmann exclusion for the partition in the pore. The coupling of 1 and 3, so convection and this energy map, can help to describe a critical flux for particle transfer. So the drag force uh, due to the convection that you have to exit in order to have the transfer. And uh, further, if you are considering the coupling between the pressure and this energy map, you can describe the osmotic counter pressure. So now I will show you some uh, results of this result have been done for a particular condition and, and here then for a pickle of 0.5 a month and you have a fraction volume fraction as a function of so the volume fraction is here as a function of z here the distance and this blue line are delimiting uh, the place where you have a membrane inside here so it's a transient simulation so when the increase we can see first an exclusion by the energy barrier here and then this, this exclusion lead to accumulation of mass and so you can see the polarization layer here to higher time after a while you can reach a steady state here last curve here and for example here for the steady state you are able to determine the transmission which is uh, 25 26 percent here so now um, the simulation has been done, has been done for different uh, condition and so the idea here is to keep the same um, energy uh, in the pore but the idea is to change the interaction range so this distance here where the interaction is changing so we use three different distance uh, a long distance um, intermediate one here and a short one so here we can consider that we have a in this case we have a easy ramp so the, the potential is increasing progressively where here we have a sharp or hard ramp with an important gradient and important forces so now the idea is to see the effect on the on the transfer so here you have a transmission as a function of a pickling number and this transmission at steady states has been uh, simulated for a different uh, ramp here so first for the short ramp so when the increase in the interaction is sharp uh, you can see that we are close to this uh, dashed line here that is the analytical equation that we can solve by considering a, a partition coefficient here yeah. and this is relatively different here we can note that it's uh, different for the uh, easy ramp so when the increase is low it's, it's progressive here in red and we can see that the an easy ramp lead to a better transfer through the membrane for, for a picklet the same pickling number you can see that the transmission is higher in this case of a green um, condition here so it's interesting to put this in parallel with uh, some uh, experiment that have been done by 
the group of uh, Zimne on uh, plasmid DNA, uh, where they are able to see that uh, the, trans the transmission of uh, plasmid DNA is better when we are in condition where we are stretching progressively the uh, DNA uh, before the entrance in, into the pore here. And so here we have a kind of a progressive uh, interaction of DNA with the wall that can lead to a better transfer. In the opposite case, in red here, uh, when you are filtering directly this DNA through the bottleneck, it's uh, more difficult to have a transmission, and so the transmission here is lower. So we can also uh, analyze this result and to see the, the effect on the concentration polarization and, and the presence of uh, critical flux. So to do that here, there is a graph where uh, from the simulation we can have a logarithm of a maximum um, concentration in the polarization layer divided by the, the uh, bulk uh, volume fraction here as a function of piglet uh, number again. So here, uh, if you have a classical film model, you should follow this uh, line here, and uh, yeah, you should then reach for higher uh, concentration, critical concentration, leading to application of particles, and then later on to a close packing uh, concentration, and then to this homogeneous critical flux. The condition that I was showing, so the simulation are here, with this color, uh, we can see that uh, we have three uh, different uh, conditions and what we can see is that when the ramp is uh, very rapid, the concentration and then the polarization layer is more important than when the ramp is uh, slow. So an easy ramp leads to go through the particle or potential barrier more easily and then we can decrease uh, the polarization. We can you can also not hear here that uh, there is a kind of maximum, and so this uh, concentration at the the maximum concentration it's after pickling number is decreasing, so it's decreasing because you are able to go through uh, the um, the pore and because your uh, pickling number is uh, larger and is able to overcome so the force due to the pickling number, so the drag force is able to overcome the um, uh, repulsion that you can that you have at the entrance of the pore so the forces that are then uh, dependent to the um, gradient in conclusion uh, i wanted to show you that the implementation of a, an energy map in the suspension balance model it's a promising way to describe simultaneously the multi-body particle particle and particle wall interaction with an Eulerian approach. And for the particular case of reverse osmosis, but it can be also extended to uh, filtration, uh, it allows to describe the main coupling of transport phenomena, so film, gel model, Boltzmann exclusion, and the critical flux for the particle transfer. And so for example, what we can uh, schematize here is that if you have a sharp increase in interaction, a sharp barrier here in interaction, so it's the case of these red particles here, the, this particle will be blocked and won't be able to go through. If you have a, a progressive increase in interaction, in this case, the case of this ramp here, then because of the flow here, you will be able to flow particles through, uh, through the pore, for example. So next, uh, we will apply this uh, to today energy map, and uh, now I'm ready for question. And I will say that we'll try to publish this work soon in uh, chemical engineering science. Thank you for your attention.